Virginia Commissioner of Agriculture, elected in January of 2017. Leonhard is a farmer operating a 380-acre farm in western Montegalia County. He raises sheep, cattle, goats, and hay. He formerly served in the West Virginia State Senate. He is retired from the United States Marine Corps as a Lieutenant Colonel. He also holds a degree in wildlife management from the University of Missouri. Citizens of Mountaineer Boys State, Mr. Kent Leonhardt. Wow, what a great crowd. I tell you what, I heard you had a long day in government, huh? How many want to be politicians now when they grow up? <laughs> Smart people. <laughs> Most, very few hands went up. No, it's, you know, it's been very rewarding being in state government. Uh, but I've got to tell you, I just met your commissioner of agriculture, Garrett. He can go around telling everybody, at least while he's here this week, that he touches the life of every West Virginian every day. And I can prove that. You all just ate a meal, didn't you? Uh, you know, when the Department of Agriculture is on the front line of uh, food safety. You know, I used to campaign on if you eat, a safe, eat from a safe, affordable, abundant food supply, you need to care who your commissioner of agriculture is. So, Garrett, give me a couple turns before you try to run against me in real life, okay? You know, I want to, I hopefully, as we go through this, I'll give you a little bit of a story of my life, a little bit. Uh, it's not to brag or anything, but I want to give you some life lessons. You know, when you go home tonight, when you go home after this, or even talk to some of your leaders here, ask them what they wanted to do when they started off as an adult, when they were your age. Ask them what they wanted to do. You'll probably find out most of them aren't doing anything at all what they thought. And it's great for you all to have your dreams, and I want you to go after those dreams. And I want you to work very hard on all those things that you really think you want to do. Some of you will go to those places and do that. And some of you will change your mind. But I want you also to know that it's okay to change your mind. But make sure that when you do your studies and you do your work, you give it everything you got because you never know when it's going to come and be of, of use. I'll give you an example. In high school, for three summers, I worked for a veterinarian. I guess you could call, say I was a super duper pooper scooper and I uh, cleaned out the kennels and everything else, but I saw the surgeries and everything and I wanted to be a veterinarian. But I also had a love of wildlife. So when I went off to college in 1972, I started with a dual major in wildlife management and uh, pre-veterinary. After a while, and I didn't care about money at that time, I said, I think I like this wildlife stuff a little bit better. Well, jobs were kind of tough when I was graduating, getting near graduation. And I saw this article about the Marine Corps that did some wildlife management. I said, oh my gosh, I'll check into this. So I ended up joining the Marine Corps. I ended up liking it, so the only wildlife I ever managed was Marines. <laughs> You're allowed to laugh, yeah. <laughs> but, Lo and behold, when I was in school, in high school and all, I hated government and history. And you guys are getting a pretty good dose of that here. Next thing you know, I become an intelligence officer. Well, wait a minute. To do that job as an intelligence officer, history is very important. Because history does tend to repeat itself, and you look for patterns. And I'm going to myself, dang, I wish I had put more effort into that history class when I was in high school and learned those areas of the world that I'll be, I'd be studying and working in. So we go along our, our way, and I ended up buying a farm in uh, West Virginia, never knowing I was going to be at this position as the Commissioner of Agriculture. And lo and behold, a little while later, after 20 plus years, I get asked to run for this job. It took a little while, and I, and I finally get here, after having done a little bit of time in the state senate, and you all got to sit in some of those chairs uh, today. Next thing you know, all of a sudden I'm, I'm the commissioner of agriculture. 47 years ago, remember I talked about that pre-vet thing? And I did all, 
I studied and did all those pre-vet classes but didn't become a veterinarian. I've got four veterinarians now working for me. 47 years later, folks, that those lessons that I started in college, that I, when I left that, I'd never thought I would do that again or be anywhere near that, ended up becoming very useful to me in my role. What I'm trying to tell you, folks, is it's okay to have dreams. Go after those dreams. Don't be afraid to change your dream. But ever so often, while you're going for those dreams, make sure you're working, doing the best you can, and learning, and taking in and absorbing everything you can while you're in school. I had a football coach, I'm still in touch with him today, from high school, about 10 years ago. I was visiting him in Arizona, and he said to me, he says, one thing I knew about you, Ken, you always work real hard. Trust me, I did not tell him about history classes. He didn't know I wasn't working real hard in, in history. But it's a lesson I learned, and I want to share that with you all to make sure that you achieve your fullest of potential. You being here is a great start. You obviously have a thirst for knowledge, and I want you to continue that. But your Department of Agriculture is one of 12 elected out of the 50 states. In other words, there's 50 secretaries, directors, or commissioners of agriculture in the state of, in this country. 12 of us are elected, which means we don't work for the governor. I'm sorry, Carson. But we do have to work with the governor because our budget depends upon it. And I believe that's the right way. I think that's the best deal uh, out there because I've talked to a lot of the secretaries in other states and they can't say some of the things that they want to say because the governor can fire them. The only way I get fired is when you guys get the chance to vote and don't reelect me. So, but I think it's a great, I think uh, having an elected commissioner of agriculture is a great thing. And every state obviously has a different set of uh, responsibilities. But again, I won't take up a lot of time. I know you've had a very long day. You've been on the bus a lot. You just had a full meal. Nothing like listening to a speaker at the end of it, what we used to call death hour, right after a meal. But I'll hang around a little bit if your folks will. Do I have time for questions? Does anybody have a question for me? I always like answering questions to folks if, if you have one. Yes. What's my favorite animal? To be honest with you, I like the goats. They're fun. They play. They're probably one of the smartest animals we had on the farm. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the important projects that we're working on right now, we're, uh, we're revamping our Veterans and Warriors to Agriculture program, and right now we're in a pilot project with the VA at Huntington, and we're doing an agrotherapy. We're helping those uh, soldiers and sailors and Marines with the unseen wounds of war uh, use agriculture as therapy. So that's one of the things that I'm most proud of that we're working on. We've also just revamped, using those four veterinarians, all the emergency action plans in case there's a disease outbreak in West Virginia. We can get it contained and keep it from dis disrupting our food supply. So those are some of the things that we work on, uh, which are very important. Back here. Uh, I'm sorry, can you say that again? What do you hope to get done during the remainder of your term in office? Uh, thank you, that's a great question. Uh, first off, I want to make sure that we get the veterans program rolling even better and that we become the, the uh, model for the nation if that continues to get funded and I hope it, it's picked up in every other state. The other thing that I want to do is we've recently done, uh, passed a, what's called the Fresh Food Act we're trying to get more local farmers to be able to sell product to state institutions. Uh, I'm kind of tired of seeing our, our institutions just feed, feeding processed foods 
which is causing some of our health care issues. If we can get people more used to eating fresh and from scratch, uh, I like to say it's good health for, the, for West Virginia. It's good health for our citizens, and it's also good health for our economy because we can turn those dollars back to the farmer rather than buying everything from out of state. The average meal in West Virginia travels 1,500 miles. What you ate tonight, on an average, traveled 1,500 miles. That means it's coming from outside of West Virginia. I want to be able to export more foods out from West Virginia because uh, we're one day's drive from 60% of the population of the country. We're ideally located to do that. And with the new technologies today, with high tunnels, we're no longer what people used to tell me, topography challenged. Uh, I visited in Texas this past week a hydroponic outfit, 18 towers tall, uh, 18 plants. Uh, food safety was paramount with it. They're growing some great things. That one acre under glass is equivalent to 240 field acres. We can do that here in West Virginia. We've got the, nat the energy to be able to heat those houses. We've got the water resources. West Virginia can get on the map. So that's something else I want to accomplish. Thank you for your question. You had a question. Commissioner, you have a question. What, is, uh, what has been your uh, greatest joy and your greatest struggle uh, through holding this position? The greatest struggle, I'll, I'll make that short and sweet, personalities. And, and, my, and my goal is to talk to as many people and get as many people to work together. I don't care who gets credit for things. I just want people to work together because a rising tide raises all ships. And that's the most important thing. I think you're building some teamwork here while you're here. So that's, that's the greatest struggle. It's just everybody's different. But I'll also tell you this. I'm glad everybody's different. If everybody was the same, it'd be a very boring world. There'd be no love, there'd be no hate. So I'll take that, that challenge because we get to have those emotions as humans that we wouldn't have. So, but anyway, that is a, that is a struggle. But the greatest joy is seeing that very often that youngster at a fair barn with their animals and the love and the care they put into that livestock or that family that's got a new crop in the field that's now selling it at a farmer's market. Or when a, somebody comes up to me and says, thank you for what you're doing. Those are all great joys with this job. Like I said, it's been very rewarding. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, what's the best thing you took from the Marine Corps that helps you with your job? Discipline. And being able to get yelled at and not let it phase me. <laughs> You're not going to make everybody happy in this job or in politics or in anything you do in your life. But just remember, take a lesson from it if there's a lesson to be learned and, and move on. Just make sure you're always doing what you believe in your heart is the right thing to do. So thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. That's a great question. Uh, yes, we do have an aging population. We're about on par with the rest of the country. About the average farmer in this nation is about 59 years old, 59 and a half years old, and we're not getting any younger. But some of the programs that we're talking about with the veterans, getting veterans into agriculture, that's usually a younger population. Uh, we're just going to have to learn to adapt. Believe it or not, there's more farms now in West Virginia than when I took office, but they just look a little bit differently. As we lost our mining and manufacturing job, the small cow-calf, the small livestock operators uh, left their state and they were doing, they were staying on the family farm uh, just because it was their family tradition. They grew up on it or their grandparents grew up on it. But when they had to leave the state for work, 
they ended up having to give up that, that farming lifestyle. That's why you see a lot of the hay fields and the hillsides growing up now that we used to, you know, I can remember 30 years ago driving down some of these roads and they were all hay fields and now they're not. But that technology that I'm talking about and the, young, and the younger folks are, that are getting into farming, believe it or not, about a third of our farmers now in West Virginia are women. There's more women getting into agriculture because of the new technologies with high tunnels and greenhouses and hydroponics. They can get into agriculture and we're getting more and more women into the field. Uh, it's working out very well for us here in West Virginia. But yes, the technology is going to be the change. Um, you know, my goal and my, my, I've told everybody in my staff, as we usher in the new, we want to make sure we can still do things the old way. I want to make sure that if you want to have a cow-calf operation on a hillside, you can still have your cow-calf operation on a hillside. But at the same time, I want to make sure that as things change, that the people that want to change can move in with that change. It's been a that's been another challenge that we've had. How do you bring in the new while retaining the old? But I think we're finding a pretty good balance at that. Is anybody else? Yes, sir. Being away from my wife for eight months while at war. She had to endure an awful lot. And you've got a great first lady of agriculture now because of it, so. Yes, sir. challenge. Um, the dairy industry, and I was just at a conference in Texas with the Southern Association of State Directors of Agriculture, and they're all feeling the same pinch with the dairy farms. And the, uh, Let's face it, uh, the way that everybody wants a, a cheap glass of milk. They don't want to pay what it would cost to keep that small farm. You have to get big or get out. The genetics, alone, we are producing more milk now than we ever have with fewer cows. The genetics in our dairy industry, the top producing cow genetically in shows and, and research is almost double what the average dairy farm is doing right now, which means we can double the production of milk without even having to add another cow to the size of our herds. So as that production has gone up, now what we're trying to do here in West Virginia is we're trying to bring some more dairy processing into the state because the south is losing most of the dairy farms and the dairy farms up north in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin are getting larger. Which means there's milk trucks passing right through West Virginia. I'd like them to stop here and because food processing is basically a manufacturing job. And I think we, that's what we're trying to work on right now to get more food manufacturing as well as the growing of the smaller family farm. So I think it can all go hand in hand. But as far as dairies coming back, probably not gonna happen. It's just gonna have to be a large dairy operator or you're gonna have to do something else. Yes, sir. Pardon? I'm partial to lamb. <laughs> lamb, sheep. We used to have two different flocks of sheep on the farm. And my wife likes to watch the, the lambs play. We don't have any on there now. I'm too busy with this job, but uh, we like the we like the uh, the shepherd side. But we had cattle too. Yes, in the back, in the blue.